Well guys, it's Saturday morning, my one day to get out and do a little bit of chopping, but it's raining, so what are you gonna do? I thought since we are stuck under the tarp here, maybe we could talk about handles. Both length, shape, type of wood, ideal versus preference. Let's go ahead and dig into it. Well, that goes without saying, we can't argue about double bit handles being straight too much because you need to be able to use both sides of the bit. And this is one of the reasons I think straight handles were so predominant during the turn of the century in America because guys were still using and used to using double bitted ax, especially out west. But as the trees got smaller, um, lighter axes became popular and there was more of a need for a pole for splitting wood and slowly but surely the double bit became less popular and the single bit with a pole became much more popular, especially here on the East Coast. You find a lot more double bits here than you do, uh, I'm sorry, a lot more single bits than you do double bits. And the handles started to get curvy. Dudley Cook, as you probably know, swears by straight handles. He insists that they're more accurate. And yet, we don't see many guys using them um, for much else but splitting. You see a few on malls now and then. Um, personally, I like a straight handle, though they don't feel quite as comfortable as a slightly curved handle, and I'm not sure why. Honestly, I think it's just more of what you got used to um, than it is ideal shape. I think this is ideal if you have to replace a handle or make a handle because it's a lot easier to make, but I don't think that this is more accurate. It is more ideal, I would argue, for a wedge beater because no matter which way you turn it, it feels natural in your hands. So for a wedge beater, I would argue yes, absolutely straight handles. For a chopper, mm, I don't think so. So let's talk about the other extreme, curvy. Not essential. This would be an example of the other extreme, curvy. This is the most curvy handle that I have, the French Curve by Killinger. And, uh, you know, I was skeptical of this early on. I thought it was going to be too curvy for my liking, but I actually really like this upswept palm swell here, especially on a heavy head. This is a four pound head. And whenever you buck with this, it almost wants to pull out of your hand. And this up sweep palm swell here just allows your hand to catch on it. So I would argue for heavy heads especially, you do want more of a curvy palm swell, fawn's foot kind of thing down in this area. Curious to uh, hear what you guys think, but I don't think that it's a um, coincidence that most racing handles have this style of fawn's foot or palm swell on it because they have heavy heads. The other thing that you could argue about curvy handles as opposed to straight handles, is that anytime you violate this grain in this direction, so as soon as you violate the grain here, that it makes the handle weaker. Um, I can't remember if Cook makes this argument, but it's a sound argument in theory, though I can't say that in practice I've noticed a difference, but I'm not a handle breaker. Um, if you guys are handle breakers, maybe these extremely curvy handles especially up here. This is really where it's vulnerable in the curve because you're violating the grain so much in this direction. On a really curvy handle, I would say that grain orientation, which is perfect on this ax, and run out, which is also perfect on this ax. This is not run out, guys. Quit calling this kind of shit run out. If the arrows are pointing in the direction of the wood, of the grain, that's just the grain of the wood. If they're pointing out of the grain, that's run out. So yeah, maybe in a uh, straight ax, 
grain orientation matters a lot less and perhaps it matters a bit more in a curvy axe. Um, I don't think so, but maybe you could argue that. This handle feels really great though, so going from a straight handle to this, yeah, you might feel a bit awkward for a minute, but I think you can get used to it pretty damn quick. And oddly enough, that is what Cook argues. He basically argues that the reason that straight handles are so are no longer popular is simply because this looked cooler and guys just got used to this, which I think is a lame argument. Um, guys that were actually using axes would not have just got used to this if the straight axe was that much better. Not all curves are that extreme. This is probably the most common shape of handle that you're gonna find on the market, which has a, a slight curve here and then a slight curve down here. I usually straighten the back of this as much as possible. This is my preference as, as far as handle shape goes in this direction. More or less straight on the back with a slight out kick right here and a slight palm swell and a slight sweep down in this direction. Most of my handles look like this. So you could argue that this is kind of the happy medium between the straight handle and the curvy handle. And I suspect that's one of the reasons that I really like this uh, style of handle. But I, I, I have to say, because I think it's more about what you started to use that is to say which handle uh shape you used first in your life and this was the style of handle that was on most splitting axes that were knocking about around the farm when i was growing up so it's what i'm used to and i think that has a whole lot more to do with what feels comfortable to you than uh, ideal shape Alright guys, let's talk about handle length. This is one time, and you can tell the misses, where shorter really is better. Hmm. Hey Big Karen, this kid here says size doesn't matter. I think it's no secret that I prefer a 28 inch handle as an ideal all-arounder, but there are practical uses for things under that. I really like, um, 24 inch handles or even better yet 25 to 26 inch handles when limbing or even when felling anything over 30 inches just feels damn awkward I'll, I mean I have a couple of 32 inch uh, splitting axes and they're fine for splitting big rounds but even at that I would prefer a 30 inch or a 29 inch handle on a uh, splitting axe Speaking of which, a lot of guys say, well, I'm a big guy, I need a longer handle than you. And um, yeah, there's an argument to be made that if you're like 6'5 or over, a 28 inch handle might not feel as comfortable as it does for me. I'm six foot um, and a 28 inch handle feels perfect for me. I think it has more to do with your agility. If you don't like to bend your knees, then yeah, you're probably gonna like a little bit longer handle, but uh, I would make a case that anything over 32 inches is too long. And we can talk about why here in just a second. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about grain orientation. You've all heard that your grain should be straight up and down in this direction. And I have several axes that are just like that. All my Swedish axes run straight up and down. The little Basque axe runs straight up and down. Any axe I've ever gotten from Killinger runs straight up and down or damn near it. Um, I got a Liam, a Liam Hoffman handle there, runs straight up and down. And uh, I got one from Lamaca here that runs straight up and down. 
Again, more Killinger handles. So that's the ideal, right? That's the way they're supposed to go. And just to throw him in, here's one from Beaver Tooth, straight up and down. All right. I don't think that matters much at all, if at all. Here is the worst case scenario, or damn close to it. Almost runs the exact opposite way. This is the new axe we were talking about, but it has no run out in it. So what matters more, grain orientation or run out? I don't think any of them matter a whole lot, but run out is definitely something that you should look for more than grain orientation. This is run out when the grain of the wood doesn't run straight through the handle, but it starts to point out of the wood. You see these arrows here? They're not running straight. They're pointing in this direction. I have several axes like this that have grain run out. This one here has a little bit in the back. The worst one that I have on the longest handle, uh, no, that's not true. This is 33 inches. But this is the worst example of a handle that I have. You can see here, right where it matters the most, I have a ton of run out. More than that, this is a cheap, uh, cheap link handle, which I absolutely despise. There is a nasty ass knot right there in the worst place. But I hung this as an experiment. This is a three and a half pound head on a like 33 inch handle. And it's got this nasty knot with a lot of run out and uh, a lot of flex and guess what so far no problems so if run out doesn't matter all that much if grain orientation doesn't matter all that much what does matter well quite frankly i think it has a lot more to do with the piece of lumber that you got whether or not it's been cured properly how tight or how wide apart the growth rings are but in short, I just don't think it matters that much. I don't think grain orientation matters that much. I don't think run out matters all that much. Um, I think knowing how to use an ax properly and being able to test the limit of that piece of lumber matters a whole lot more than either of these two things. Grain orientation does so matter. I think grain orientation matters more on longer handles. So this is where I think it came from. When guys were using 34, 36 inch handles on a regular basis and they were slimming them down a lot, then yeah, I think this matters, just like it matters in a two by four when you get over 16 feet. So you start getting 16 feet in a two by four, you're always gonna wanna stand it up like this on end and get the grain orientation running this direction. But when you're talking about 28 inch handles or less, it doesn't matter a lick. It doesn't matter if the grain runs like this and you got run out pointing like this, if you know how to use an ax. That's my opinion anyway. Take it or leave it. All right, let's talk palm swells real quick. I think it's clear that I don't like them. You can see here, I cut off three palm swells, effectively giving me half of what you would normally have on an ax. And I have to say, this is definitely a preference. Most guys are gonna hate an ax like this or this with virtually no palm swell. I like it. And I'm convinced it's from my days of playing hockey. You can see here that I preferred a small palm swell on my hockey stick. And that's because you don't hold a hockey stick like this. You don't choke up on it. You hold it back here so that the uh, butt of the stick can rotate in your palm whenever you're stick handling. And that's how I hold an ax. Um, when I hold an ax, I hold the ax partially out of my palm like that. I don't choke up on it. I mean, sometimes when I'm limbing, but normally the butt of the ax is right there, half in, half out of my palm. Now, that said, I don't think I prefer no palm swell. Uh, this ax is an experiment. It, ha it is swelled slightly in this direction uh, to give me a little bit extra to hold on to down there. This is the ideal palm swell for me as of now. 
I like a slight hook in this direction. That's enough by itself for me to be able to hold on to the ax, but I do prefer it to be swelled slightly in that direction and slightly in this direction as well. So slightly both directions, but not much. Not much, mind you. And I don't want this lanyard hole to be there. My pinky tends to drop in that and it bothers me. So no lanyard hole, slight hook, slight swell in either directions. Most of you are probably gonna find that you prefer a much larger palm swell. This here would be the largest um, palm swell that I actually like. I'm really enjoying this French curve, but it's mostly because it has this hook here. The palm swell is not very large, and most of you would find this damn awkward, I think. So that's something you have to sort out for yourself. But again, if I haven't already beaten it into the ground, experiment. How are you gonna know what you like unless you experiment? Take it all the way off so that you have a, a starting point. Go with some massive palm swell like this. You could have left all of this on here. Go from nothing to huge and then whittle it down and see what feels comfortable. All right, major takeaway number one. Short handles are better than long handles. They just are. Why? Because science. Ha, ha, ha. No, I'm just kidding. Short handles are better than long handles because accuracy is the king of the ax game. They're just more accurate. Why? One, because you're closer to your work. But two, with a long handle, every mistake you make up here is magnified by the time you get down to the log between your feet. So little mistake, big mistake. Less so with the short handle. But more importantly, if you don't believe me, try a shorter handle than you're used to, and I bet you find that it's more accurate. All right, how short is too short and how long is too long? The eighth grader in me wants to come out, but I will withhold. I would argue that 23 inches is the shortest handle you want on an ax and can still call it an ax. Anything shorter than 23 inches is just gonna be damn awkward. They call them hand and a half hatchets. What the hell is that? A hand and a half? Yeah, that just means you can't swing it with two hands. Anything less than 23 inches, you're not gonna be able to comfortably swing it with two hands. Now that brings up the question, how long of a handle should a hatchet be and still be called a hatchet? My opinion is gonna differ here, I'm sure, because I think of a hatchet the same way I think of a hammer. And I think of a hammer nowadays, not as a tool to hammer nails, but to beat stuff. We're no longer hammering nails, we're using nail guns, which is why I think a 13 and a half, 14 inch handle on a hammer is about perfect. You see guys, um, I see guys all the time with 18 inch uh, handles on hammers and they're always choked way up on it because you don't need that maximum force to handle the hammer nails anymore, which is why I also prefer a lighter head on a handle, on a hammer that is. Same thing is true on an ax. I think about 13 and a half inches is perfect. I got plenty of purchase back here if I really need to give it some, which you rarely do with a hatchet. Most of the time you're gonna be choked way up on it carving. So I would say anything over 13 and a half inches, maybe 15 if you really are using it to give her some, which I don't know why you don't just get a boy's ax, but uh, maybe 15 but I would say 13 and a half inches is ideal. So that gives us this uh, weird dead man's zone from like 14 inches to 20 inches. I'm basically arguing that there shouldn't be any 14 to 20 inch handles on hatchets or axes. Now, how long is too long? I think 30 inches is the longest handle you're gonna want on an ax, regardless of the head weight. 32 inches might be okay if you're a really tall, big guy, but anything over that is just gonna make you less accurate and you're gonna be more tired trying to keep control of that head 
out there on that long handle. Now, of course, once upon a time, guys were accurate with these long handles when they were chopping these big trees down. We're not chopping big trees down, so there's no point of us trying to go through the effort of getting used to them. So keep it under 30 and above 14, and you're going to be in the wheelhouse. Grain orientation means fuck all. The dad is the puck behind the net, in between the defender's legs, circles around, shot, score! All right, enough of that nonsense, but you get my point. This is a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. And experiment. How do you know what you like if you don't try new things? And I don't mean to make it sound like an empty platitude, but specifically when we're talking about axe handles, if you've only ever tried one type, how do you know you don't like something else or there's not a preference out there that you haven't even given a shot yet? So when modifying handles, you know, make it too thin. Take off the palm swell altogether. Make it too fat. Make it too flat. Just try new things with each axe, especially if you're making your own handles. You can essentially do whatever you want. And the smallest tweak might make the biggest difference in the world. So uh, have fun and experiment. Uh, suffice it to say that most of my handles are hickory and I am experimenting currently with some different wood types. Got a knot right there, but... Another knot on that side. So I don't see us hitting the overly ambitious goal of 500 subs by the end of the year. But if we hit 300, I will still do the giveaway. So share and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one.